Hello, Shirley Peters here again. How are you going? Um, I'm going today to do a very simple watercolour. I was going through some of my old um, my papers uh, over there and I found this little um, seascape that uh, I did a while ago and I think I did it as a demonstration um, because it's not signed and it's got a little bit of mess on the side here which could have been something I was talking about. But it just gave me the idea for a simple, a simple watercolour that um, of a sea, of the sky, the earth, and the water, and maybe some boats. Um, and I thought at the same time I would compare the paper quality. Of I'll do the same painting three times, and I'll do it with a rough, medium, and smooth. And that's what I have here. Um, arches. I've I've got these pads that I used to use when I was doing smaller works. Um, they're pretty old. I don't know how old they are to tell you the truth, but the prices are. So that one says Australian $17. This one says Australian $22. And this one is 26. So if you're looking at them yourself, they're the A4 size paper and uh, smooth, medium and rough. And you see by the different colours for arches, they do the different uh, colour fronts on them. So I hope you can see that. Uh, and then as a contrast, I have a canson, which is similar. It's a, it's a rough, which is my preferred, it's A4. And this one is $15 back in the day. I have a feeling it's probably gone up now, but it just goes to show that they're all close to their 20s, in the 20s, this is 15. The Canson is a cheaper watercolour paper and one of the reasons is it's, it's paper, it's wood based, whereas these are cotton based. So um, that's one difference, but um, someone, um, thank you very much for your comments because I'm getting some ideas on, uh, on what, what sort of tests to do with the materials. Um, if I was to, um, I'll paint on this fourth one as well, so that's three different levels of um, texture plus the cheaper paper and I'll do the same little painting three times over and then you can see um, how it looks and uh, uh, also um, copy, it, copy it yourself and have a trial. And to tell you the truth, we're getting close to Christmas so something like this would make a lovely card and what I suggest you could do is if you had the A4 pad which First, first one off the rank, rank has got a pencil mark on it, so I'll use this as a demonstration. Um, you can fold it in half. Now, this can give you a couple of different um, options. If you fold it in half, it's a little bit like a craft, a craft demo. Paint one side, and then you can just um, write your note to someone inside, and that makes a really, really special uh, Christmas card saves you having to get buy a gift. This is so special, it, it replaces buying stuff, which of course you don't want to do anymore. Uh, the other thing is, if you think, if it's really nice, um, that's how you actually separate the card. Um, uh, how can I put it? That's how you divide watercolour paper up. You actually fold it backwards and forwards until it's really, really, really soft. And you get a ruler, normally, but you just tear it. In fact, there's something, this is an old trick, I just remembered. Uh, wet the edge, Being brush preferably. God, I'm hopeless. Wet the edge, like that. Turn it the other way, wet that edge. Let's hope this works. <laughs> then you tear it. It'll tear along that, that weakened point. Now, those torn edges are desirable in watercolour. People often want, it's called a decal edge, it's, that's not a decal edge, but it looks like a decal edge. A decal is the side of the paper where they, when they make a flat sheet, the, um, and they haven't cut it, the very edge where the cotton, the cotton came up on the wire makes a little feathered edge, and that's called decal. Uh, people love that. But that's it, Let's, uh, that's another, that's for another day. So there's two cards of the smaller size that you can do, or you can fold it in half and leave it like that. So either way, um, to, to start with, you would paint, to do that folded, the folded version, you would paint on 
the bottom half of your page and then fold it afterwards. Otherwise you've got this big crease that you're trying to manage. You, want, you really do want a flat page to start with to, to do good watercolour. So um, I think this will be a fun little exercise, so let's get started. I'll just do the, um, the cameras. Oh, and um, if you like the video, can you please click the like button and subscribe. Oh, and there's another thing too. There's a little button on the left, little arrow, which some people who are new to YouTube don't realise that you can click on that. And underneath is all my details, like um, the, the, the paints that I use and uh, the paper, that's where I get the paper from, or my preferred paper anyway and um, uh, more details underneath this video. And you don't see them straight away. You've got to click that little grey arrow, which is somewhere down there. Anyway, let's get started. Obviously I can't count because one, two, three plus the counts on is four times. I'll be doing the painting four times. <laughs> So uh, now let's get started. Right, what I'm going to do is, I've decided I will do one at a time so I can get a wet in wet look about this particular little picture. And um, I'm just going to paint on cards. I'm not going to try and do the whole... Mm, the, oh, I will paint on this because I need to know for sure how the rough is going to fare. Just knowing that that's the halfway point. These are pencil marks I can rub out later. That's going to be the top of my area, bottom, and then in from one side, round about there, in from the other side, around about there. So um, basically, there. I won't put them back on. I don't want to spoil that. So start with a little bit of purple and a little bit of ultramarine blue. Mix it to a nice batch. Now I've got a dry paper here um, and it might need water, but I'll, I'll have a look first and see how it goes. I'll wet my brush. can be fairly strong at the top just do a nice little corner there slightly rounded going to touch a tiny bit of improve, just for the fun of it I'm just going to put a tiny bit of um, a magenta that's what I'm looking for the word so I'm using water on my brush alone just water and I'm just touching the bottom of that area that I've painted just to encourage it to lead, bleed down the page. Of course, I'm, on, I'm tilting up, you always put your board on an angle, and it's up to you what, what level you want. Um, later on, you can have some fun at this stage. This is the stage where you, you go back into the top and, and you pick out the clouds. But I'm just letting that roll down the hill. While that's coming down, I'll just make sure I don't get the, these blobs of water not too too heavy because they might just come literally rolling down I don't want that to happen a little bit of tissue there to wipe my brush um, now I'm mixing up some um, what's that colour sort of like a, a dark yellow I'll have to um, <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit slack I, I've forgotten the names of these colours but um, it's a, it's a a cadmium deep I think would be one good description a little bit of the green and I've got yellow green burnt sienna never forget burnt sienna now that's a fairly light green I think I'm going to touch it there yep so I'm just going to touch that across in a rough way, not a straight line, I'm going to just do a couple of curves up and down and then up towards the end and I can leave it up like that. Now I'm going to wash the brush, I'm going to go in and put just straight yellow on my brush, put that in the middle of that area 
wash brush again. I'll come back and get up and I'll dry the brush off a touch. I'll get some burnt sienna because that's kind of a brown and I'll turn my hand upside down like this and I'll create a nice edge and one across like that. Drop, drop down a little bit just to give it a, a sort of a different shape to the shoreline because it's never straight. It's never a straight line and this is the shoreline we're doing now. So simple. Uh, while it's still wet, wash brush again and go into your burnt umber which is really really dark and using the tip of the brush just touch it across the base there not all the way bits leave it a couple little bits there so I've tended to I've left that vertical part there but I'll put it behind you can even run it in a little bit to the into there see what happens maybe not maybe yes then dry your brush and while it's wet now, just lay your brush over the top of that little part there. It's like a piece of land. And there's another one there. What I'm doing is just sucking up some of that paint three times. That's enough. I'll leave the back one as it was. Now, just letting that dry off a little bit because I don't necessarily want that to bleed too far down into the next colour which is going to be the bright and light blue, cerulean blue. So clean the brush, just wait a little bit. If I had a hair dryer I would um, I'd, I'd dry it with my hair dryer I think. I could tell I don't, have to be, I don't have to surprise you, this is rough. This is watercolour rough. I've got to remember what I do because I need to do it on all of them. The others I'll probably speed up. I won't make you oh, clean water over there. Go to clean water for this colour. So it's a, a cerulean blue or a cobalt, whatever blue, it doesn't matter. Blue's blue. Um, you could even use your ultramarine blue, which is the like a navy blue. So I'm going to um, just go right up to the land now, Touch, just touch the land and I don't mind if a little bit of the brown comes down because that's going to look like it's a shadow, a reflection. So cross like that, go back to the blue. I didn't wash my brush then, I just went straight back to the blue. Now I'm just going to go with a, bit, a couple of loose brushes like that. Now I'm going to wash. I've left them, I've deliberately left a couple of white patches. So now I'm going to add a little bit of green to that blue and then blend that in half and half. So I'll go right down, I touch into the previous colour and then turn my brush around. And what I'm going to do is a couple of loose strokes across like that, maybe leaving a bit of white. End on a real thin little note like that. Very simple. I think this is one of the tricks is to make sure, you can go back into that by the way, it will take a little bit of playing around. You don't have to drop everything. I'll just do that. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm just making it like a, a nice little edge. Right. Now wash the brush again and leave it. And that is the beginning of a card. That's going to be one of my cards. I'm going to come back in a little while and add those boats. But that's the start. Oh, there's a, one, there's a couple of other things I, I did there that made it stand out a little bit. And I've got a little bit of that texture. So if you were to take, while it's still a bit dampish like this, tiny bit, this is if you game, you know, this is the next stage, a little bit of uh, magenta or um, alizarin in crimson, cr crimson colour. And with the very tip of this lovely pointy brush, if you have one like this, just pop that in there, like that, right along the very edge. Sometimes alizarin crimson does interesting stuff. I'm just going to run that up like that, a couple of little lines. I'm not going to put trees in. This is a landscape. So one thing I've noticed is I've, the wet in wet has, I've lost my edge 
of that land but I don't mind and what you can do if you do if it does bother you wait till it totally dries and then go over it with one piece of um, you know one stroke and I might do that in a little while to show you how it's done all at once just to speed things up so that was my individual demo I'll just get these three up Once again, I'll just make sure I've got the bottom edge. Um, in Australia, we, uh, we like to send sort of summery Christmas cards rather than wintry ones. Um, it's just uh, because of where we live. Now, the carbazole purple, or pur just a straight purple, and a little bit of ultramarine blue will be a start for me on this one. So it's a learning curve because I don't normally paint on smooth. This is smooth. Right. And this is medium and this one is the canson on the end. I'll try and make it a bit darker. Okay. I'm washing my brush and I'm just going to give it a little bit of pull down, I call that. Wet, wetness to bring it down into a paler, dark at the top and pale under the bottom. Now, while that's, you no, know, before it dries, I'll mix, I'll get some more of the, the yellow. I'll say a, bit, a little bit of raw umber there. Might be a bit different to the first one I did. Raw sienna, sap green. Mm -mm. I'll do raw sienna, I'll try and make it a brown green. So just added a little bit of I just added a little bit of bright green to my brush. So I've got a bit of brown and green together. So straight across like that. Oops. A little bit more brown in. You can keep because it's ground you can keep changing it. So the, the front going down like that. I'm going to do the next one right across. Front going down like that and the next one it's running out of colour not very scientific this little episode but there you go now I've got a little bit of a problem here because that dried out fast that one was mm. well, they got different rates of drying I guess I did that fairly quickly you're watching this in real time and uh, what I might do on this one is just to make it a little bit more interesting because I'm not happy with that real sharp edge there. So I'll just fiddle around a little bit to soften that up. I'm using just water on my brush there. Okay, so that's the land. Um, and we added a tiny bit of burnt umber to the bottom edge while it was still wet. Get too, I've got that a little bit too much water on my brush. Dry. Like that. Like that. Like that. Okay. So I'm just going to let that dry a touch. Oh yes, that's right. What we did before was just laid the brush in a little bit to to give a little bit of that lightness on the mountain top. So we high there. Another tissue. High there. I'll just do my best on each one to try and get a little bit of a lift out. 
I call this lifting out the paint. Mm, that's nice. I can see which one I like already. It's this one out of these three. Oh, wet brush, tap it on. There you go. This one, wet brush, tap it on. Quite interesting, this one. I'm not saying it's not good, it's just different. Okay. Now I'll get a clean brush for my next layer and I'm just going to wait a minute for that to dry. I might even get the hair dry. Oh, here we go. So I'll turn the sound off so you don't hear this. But this is my hair dryer doing its thing. You can see that's going to run down the page. I've got to suck that up. If you see any blobs, get rid of them. Use your brush to get rid of them. You can use a tissue paper, but in this case, make sure your brush is dry and touch your brush in. And a bit like a, um, a pipette, it will just suck it up. So, oh, and I think before I did a couple of nice, oops, I need a dry brush. I did a couple of interesting brush strokes across the, the front of the landscape just to give a tiny bit of feeling of roundness and I touched in with a little bit of the uh, alizarin crimson or magenta just for the variety of colour on the edge That's, where, that's how you sort of make, make your paintings look a little bit more professional. Just add that different colour that you're not expecting. Who, who'd put a pink there? Half a minute. Now, already that water's dirty, so I'll just go to clean water. Constant, constant need for clean water. And here I'll mix up the cerulean blue. Put that on the side. Touch it into the land all the way around. Then do horizontal strokes. And then add a bit of, bit of the green at the front. don't like the white, leave it, you can get rid of it, won't matter. Sometimes it looks good, sometimes it's unnecessary. So here I'm putting a, a blue into that, bringing it down to oops, a touch of the green. Same over here, blue into that edge. It does it's beautiful and rich colours this this can song. It has got its own feel about it. Oops, I don't want that. I want a touch of yellow into this area over here. Probably a little bit different that one. And add that blue in there, darker blue in the distance, and then off to the green in the front. And it's not absorbing the uh, paint, it's if the paint is running over the surface more. That one, the paint just sucked in like a sponge, and this is half and half. Okay, so Canson, the first one I did was. The rough. The rough. The medium and the smooth. And this is Canson rough, but to me it's much closer to the smooth. So I'll just move that around. 
have to confuse myself. I'll go this way. Arches smooth, cans on smooth, arches rough, arches medium, medium rough. So I look at all those those four, um, and I, if I had to analyse them, I would be saying that one gives the most smoothest wash that I could that I've done. This one uh, got a little bit out of hand, in so much as there's strong uh, divisions between the colours, although it's all much of a muchness. This is what I call tide marks, and it's good that we're doing the sea, but see, in the, even in the, um, uh, in the sky, you end, up with tight, you, you end up with your brush strokes showing, whereas in these ones, the brush strokes all blend in together, and you can't tell where your brush was, so that way, it's more mysterious. It's better. I think these are much better. This way, who wants to see every stroke? Unless, of course, it's a deliberate thing where you're using like a Van Gogh feel about it and you want everything to, to stand out. But if you're trying to create an image, sometimes you might deliberately want a stroke, but you don't always. You need a contrast. You need smooth areas and then areas where you put strokes in. Now, this one, the Canson one, very interesting. Um, has a, a mind of its own, definitely. Uh, it's it's blended quite well. I'm, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, there are little light dark, light dark, light darks, which is is mimicking that, um, that uh, undulations of the paper. Whereas the um, the arches roughness is more um, sharper. Whereas this has been blend smoothed off. Sort of almost like you call it a fake rough. It's a smooth rough. Yeah, so let's have a quick look at that. So that just to confirm, that's the Canson. And this one here is the smooth. Or arches smooth. And it's a very, I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but there's just no texture to that paper at all. And that's ideal for when you're using pen work, calligraphy, that type of detail where you really do want, or very fine um, botanical paintings where you're doing leaves that fold over and little petals and you have details. That's perfect for that because the roughness of these two rough versions um, give you bumpy lines. You don't want bumpy lines. You want the smoothest of smooth black lines and things when you're drawing with a pen. But for painting, I do think that uh, this one, I don't know why, Mr. Page, takes the cake, that one, Arches Medium, and Arches Rough, which is the, uh, the orange colour. And if I had my druthers, and I do have it, I do, t I choose this one. That said, it's expensive, very expensive. Now, just for the fun of it, we're going to put the trees in. I mean, the, we're not going to put trees in. We're going to put the boats in. And I'll show you the fun way of doing that. We'll get a small brush. I'll just hunt around till I find a small brush. Um, have to decide. And what I'll do, of course, I won't just jump in and do them. I'll just have a bit of a play on a spare piece of paper, which could be... Now that I know how expensive this stuff is, I don't want to use... Normal paper. I don't want to use watercolour paper. base of a boat is dark so it can be a little bit of burnt umber and I've got this purpley blue mix here that'll do I'll just put the burnt umber into the bluey purpley mix and uh, I'm just going to do it's got to be very dark oh, purple. 
lots of blue. So mix all your darks together, try and get almost a black. Hmm. Actually, a bit more purple. A bit more brown. Okay, that's good. It's it's a neutral. It, it's what they call a, a neutral grey, a neutral tone. That's it. So two boats at the back and one at the front. It's good to stick to a pattern. Give yourself a little rule like that. So I'm just going to do a long, just a sort of a dash there, a dash there, and a smaller dash there. Yeah, same on this one. Oh, actually, no. Um, you know what? I'm an idiot. I'll, I won't do the same on that one because it might not work. So I may as well just try it on my first one. I'm going to put a tiny bit of shadow underneath. So what I've done, I've washed my brush. Hunting for fresh water, not much there. I've washed the brush, it's a little bit half wet. I've tapped into the blue and I'm just going to draw a little bit of a, a, a little splash of water underneath. I'm going to place, in other words, I'm going to just place a little bit of blue that's very wet underneath those boats. Now I'm going to wash the brush out till it's really clear. And then I'm going to bring it down a bit more. That's just water. I'm just putting water underneath. And what you can do is just do little sideways taps. Just tap like that. Little dashes, I guess you'd call it. I don't mind that too much. Um, what I'll do now is... I'm going to do a little bit different. That was a little bit rough there, but... Another little line above. Half, half the distance of the first one. That's to give the impression that there is a shape, a three-dimensional shape on the water. Now I'm going to get the gouache. And I'll actually get a new brush so that I'm not trying not to contaminate this. Just take it straight out of the tube. Yeah, that's okay. And I've got a really thin little brush here. Sometimes this, the quality of the brush is so important, it's hard to describe to you how important that is. So I'm just going to go straight. Um, now that I look at that, it's, I've done a triangle going up to a point, so a long thin. So I might come down that way. I think it might be easier if I just come in a curve like that. Oop. It's not, it's not wet enough. I might have to mix it onto a plate. Onto a plate. Let's just see how I go. Come straight down. Don't, don't touch the, the boat, just stay at the top above it. Fat up to thin. It'll do. This one. Straight up. Oop. Like that. Might even go, I might, you know, I'm, I'm being silly here, but let's do this. Triangle up like that, like that, like that. Oh, I can't say that's a success, but it's not too bad. Um, underneath, you can just go tap, tap like that with the white still on the brush. Leave a gap and just do a couple of little, what do you call them, equal signs. Do it, do it. There you go. And that gives you little calm boats on the water. I've made a terrible mess of the different shapes of the sails and here the I also did on my originals so it doesn't matter. Half close your eyes it looks like sails. Now if you're doing a lot of them like I'm doing here you can bet your life I'm going to be pretty good by the time I get to the end. So let's see how I go. I'm going to just, uh, I'll stop talking and I'll just put the, the rest of these in. Yeah. Pretty hard for me to stop talking, I must admit. Wetness underneath to bring it down. 
again on this one. Going back to do the top of the deck here. Oops, make sure my finger's clean because I put I plant my finger just to do a little close controlled dab like that, 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 and that. Poof. Okay, I've kind of been holding my breath. <laughs> Let's go again. I'm um, kind of tempted to put this one up above the, just for the fun of it, above the land a little bit. So, there, yeah, that worked. Just fat blob and then straight up. Fat blob, straight up. Fat blob, straight up. Okay. Now I'm going to try something a bit different. Oh, and then I'll do the little tap taps underneath. I'm putting them right down away from the boat. This one I'm going to try. This looks a little bit more, less calm. This looks a little bit wilder. So I'm going to put the boats more on an angle. Like the, I'm going to really tip out that sail that way. And of course, they all go face this, you know, in, to a degree. And I'll come back. I'm sort of doing a bit of a shape here that bring it out that way. can't describe that, you just have to see what I've done. And sometimes the, you know the wind's going this way so they're all going to be leaning in the same direction. And same for the last one here. Yeah. I'll bring it over so you can see what I'm doing. It's too far away. Once again, a little bit of a triangle shape going up that way, that way, right. actually that's something you could do too, I just did two accidentally there and that worked out quite well too, because you could just pretend there's two sails, okay, so that's my little simple watercolour scene done four times and uh, you'll see the different papers, what I might do is I'm just thinking I might end up putting these four photographs of these on my website so um, you can see if you're interested, that interested, you can see how closely um, how they compare or you could just do this for yourself if, you, if you're rich enough to afford different, the different papers or you can always buy small sheets, like a single sheet, and tear it up that's the traditional way that watercolours do. They, they buy a sheet of paper and tear it into small sections. And then they can play around. They have more freedom. So there we go. I'll just put Kent's on back where he was. So that's the rough, medium and smooth. And Kent's on rough. Thank you. Thanks for being with me during that little test. That was a lot of fun. And uh, I think uh, I've um, come to the conclusion that I'm enjoying using Archer's paper and I'll continue to do so. And I suggest that you can, if you do, if you can afford it. But that said, the Canson and other um, cheaper watercolour papers have their, have their um, advantages to a degree because you can be loose and uh, free and be happy to make mistakes and not feel like, oh my gosh, I've just wasted $6 or, or however much the sheet costs. So that's it. Thank you. If you were to um, join me on Patreon and uh, become one of my patrons and uh, supporting me for a few dollars a week, uh, my thank you will be a card posted to you. So it'll be it'll be one of the uh, tiers that are on the um, on my on my page in, in Patreon, and I'll put a link underneath here so you know where to go. And that way you can support my art. Thank you very much, and uh, enable me to keep making these videos which I love doing. So thanks a lot, and if you could like and subscribe. <laughs> okay, bye for now.